<laughs> I, mean, I, would, yeah. I would think that would be the most fun job of all. It's pretty, it's pretty fantastic. Go for it. <laughs> you don't have to be in front of a camera. And uh, you get to play the mic. Oh, thank you. You get to play maestro. Yeah. What's the challenging part of your business? What are you, what are you challenged by? Oh, challenging? Uh, yeah. Let me think about that for a moment. I just like, it brings me such pure joy. Uh, it's hard to find anything particularly challenging because, uh, I don't know, I'm just having a blast. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to say what is. I guess maybe when things, yeah, I feel like I have to make something up, honestly, just to think about what's challenging about it. <laughs> Seriously. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I can't think of anything. Um, you know, maybe if I want to like bring on a certain size orchestra, or maybe if I want to, if I have larger than life ideas, and then I'm confronted with budgetary restrictions. But even then, there's a lot of creativity that comes from budgetary restrictions. Like you just kind of roll with the punches and you just have fun with it. You're just like, okay, we'll get a really amazing soloist. You can see like all these levers you're pulling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's not too much of a downside. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. So I studied music composition. Um, went to Vassar College, graduated in 2010, um, and initially I started as performance music. So it's performing and touring in bands. And I think just the nature of being in LA, there's a lot of creatives that are wanting music for their content, whether it's podcast or short films or whatever. And you kind of just fall into it a little bit. But at the same time, I'm always really passionate about film music. Like John Williams, like I love Hook. Like that's like an iconic score. And of course, like, I don't know, John Williams is like a hero. Eddie Morricone is a hero of mine. Like iconic Western sounds. And what he did with like incorporating like 70s guitar and 60s guitars with like orchestra. I think that's so cool. Um, so, I don't know, there was always like this burning passion that was like maybe a little bit late and dormant, but it just kind of came to the surface when we moved to Los Angeles. It just kind of made sense. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to ask you, in general, what was it like working on something as wonderfully weird as Adventure Time and all its various sequels? Oh my gosh, it's it's pure joy, like I mentioned earlier on the panel, and uh, there's a lot of creative freedom just to like go for it and just be your true artistic self and have a lot of fun. Um, I tend to write like long form pieces. You know, I started off playing in bands, but I couldn't write that's like a four minute, three minute pop song. I always wrote more, like seven minute, like long form songs. I love bands like Yes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I couldn't help it. I was just like, I love all this like weird, cool stuff. <laughs> So film scoring, working with Adventure Time, like it's just like that medium is like so perfect for my sensibilities and writing music. And Adventure Time just lets me really run wild with the ideas I have or ideas I want to explore. So I'm just grateful for Adam Mudo <laughs> and um, just having a blast. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you start? Do you start with the storyboard level or where do you start? Yeah, so I get the animatic. Um, and a lot of times I'll kind of get the picture close to a locked picture. There may be just a few frames that change, but um, for the most part I'm getting the almost final product. Oh, 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 you mentioned being part of Adventure Time. I mean, that was kind of a period of yeah, Adventure Time. We have a regular show and all those shows. So, a lot of those Cartoon Network shows, was there a show that you wanted to actually be composing for and just weren't able to do it? Well, you know, so I've just joined like the Adventure Time family. Um, so, I started with the Distant Lands specials, and then now I'm doing like the whole uh, season of Fiona and Kate. So, I mean, oh gosh, I mean, it was Dexter's Laboratory on it. I think it was like a million years ago when I was a child. Yeah, I was a child, so I couldn't have worked on it. But when I think about stuff like that, uh, that's like, I don't know, I love Cartoon Network, and just, that was kind of like my viewing preference as a child <laughs> over other networks. Um, so, I'm just happy to be part of that world now. What was the one thing that surprised you about being in this business that you didn't know before? Um, let me think about that for a second. I guess, um, you know, let me think about that. It surprised me about this business. You know, it's not as intimidating as it could be, although there are a lot of hurdles to overcome. Um, I think coming from the band world, pop music world, which is extremely cutthroat, like applying that same energy to like the composing world, it's like the skill set is like uh, it's so specific. Like the talent pool is a lot smaller, so you can cut through the noise a lot faster. Um, so I think that's what surprised me that it's like.
like very accessible, um, more so than other aspects of the music industry. Cool. Yeah. So the Adventure Time universe, it seems to have so many different genres and such in one. So how do you aim to adjust your compositions to the senior composing part? Yeah, um, yeah, there's a lot of lore and, you know, history of the Adventure Time universe. So if I'm working on an episode or a season of it that references different parts of the past, which it often does, I'll definitely like pop in and like refresh on what was done. But also, there's a lot of room to like have fun and try something new. Adam will be very specific with his notes, his creative notes, if something needs to harken back to like a particular era of Adventure Time or a particular like Sonic universe in Adventure Time. So whenever I need to, I will tap into that history. But there's a lot of room for just exploration and doing something new, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of daunting to kind of jump into something like that at the time, especially. Yeah, it's wild. I'm, it's surprising how free it is, considered how many like storylines are tied together, what would seem to be really like cemented in this whole idea. There's just a lot of freedom to have fun. Yeah. You ever find yourself at a loss? Like, you need this sound, but you don't know what it is. Got, I need a new sound, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I have yet to experience writer's block, if that's what you mean. Knock on wood, hopefully this is wood. But, I don't know, I've always... I don't know, I have an insatiable hunger for just trying something new. So, uh, it hasn't happened yet. Good challenge. Yeah. Well, I'm... That uh, follow, leads into what I was curious about. Deadlines versus creativity versus experimentation. How do you balance it all? Oh, that is totally a balancing act. Um, it can be challenging, you know, to really play around with ideas when you're given a deadline. Um, but you just do the best you can. It's like, uh, I think that's the art and the artistry and the skill set that comes with this career, especially in television, where you have to be creative and do it fast. And I think that's just the muscle that you have to continuously flex as you're working on a variety of TV projects. But yeah, yeah, I think it is challenging. So maybe that's one of the things that are challenging. <laughs> but it's, it's still, there's a lot of room for playing around with ideas. Um, yeah, I think that's the artistry and the expertise that comes along with uh, the industry, like just being in the game for a while. Yeah. So for Fiona and Kate, is there anything you can tease about it? Like how did they make harken back to previous Adventure Time themes or anything like that? Um, I'm going to err on the side of like <laughs> being very neutral. All I can say is there's a lot of different Sonic ideas. Um, so I think if you know about Adventure Time and how different spaces have different ideas, I think the fact that there's many of them, that can be a little tidbit. Yeah. <laughs> Talking, well, you just mentioned that thing about creativity. Like, you know, in terms of growth as a musician, like, where do you kind of see yourself? As, oh, growth? Yeah, I mean, just yeah. as the show and just beyond. Yeah, as the show and beyond. I mean, I really look forward, forward to doing, like, just kind of like a massive, like, animated feature film. Uh, whether it's, like, the next Trolls movie or, like, the next, like, Turning Red or whatever it may be. Um, like, the Kraken just came out, the Teenage Kraken, like, that seems super cool. Like, I look forward to. Oh, or how to train a dragon, like I look forward to like the next like large, you know, sequels and trilogies of like the next animated feature film and I, and I hope to be part of that. I think that'd be really fun. <laughs> how do you decide when not to use music? Just dead. Oh yeah. How do you how do you decide that? Yeah, I think no music is a smart choice sometimes just to give the audience like a break <laughs> and to make it so much more impactful. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, there's definitely choice moments. I think the storytelling very much like dictates when it should be quiet um, and how we want the audience to feel. Um, but yeah, I think it, it can be easy to overscore something. But yeah, there's a lot of um, uh, benefit to just like being really choice about your choices <laughs> and how you want to do how you want to do things. But silence is a very important device to give the music that much more of an impact. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, you were one of the composers on a Black Lady sketch show, yeah. which unfortunately I just know. ended. It's so tragic, but still, it has such an amazing legacy. And just what was it like to be part of a project like that? Oh, that was amazing. That, so that was my first television series. Wow. Yeah, so that was kind of like my starting point in my career. So it was really awesome to work with Robin Petey, like uh, predominantly black female like cast and crew. So I feel like for that to be my initial foray into the like the industry, <laughs> I was like very lucky, you know. Um, <laughs> 
just to be like supported by such incredible women. Um, and I think that show gave me so much to like arm myself, you know, as I take that information to other shows that don't have quite as diverse like crew as a team. So um, I feel like I've learned so much and it was like a beautiful jumping off point in my career. <laughs> yeah. Was there a lot of freestyling on that show in terms of oh. being able to like be creative? Yeah, there's a ton of creative freedom on Black Lives Sketch Show. I mean, it's the nature of the sketches, it's like each sketch is its own universe, so so everything is very quite different from each one. There is a through line, the interstitials, to kind of tie the larger story arc <laughs> together, um, which is like this crazy conspiracy. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's really cool. <laughs> you mentioned conspiracy, so I do need to ask: Did you uh, compose anything for Dr. Hadassah Ali Uncle oh. Ali Youngman pre PhD? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so her character is just like so wild um, and fun and ridiculous. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of like, um, oh we were inspired by Get Out, like the I Got Five like remix, so we kind of like did our own version of that. Like I created something, an original theme for season one, and got its own remix in season two and season three, so I was always remixing earlier uh, themes and motifs, so it was like just like further, I don't know, convoluted and strange, and yeah. Just like very deep references within the music and within the humor. Yeah. You were part of Crazy, so I got it. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much, y'all. The whole props for to Robin Beatty. Yeah. She's like coming at me. What do you what do you think of other shows like you know, kind of like like the like, show like, Sherman Showcase? Because Sherman Showcase has its own set of like yeah. music for that. So, like, so I have to say I haven't watched it. Oh yeah. But um but yeah I think you know I think it's so cool just like when composers just kind of go for it and just have like a lot of fun with the score. I think the more fun the better and I think the audience really reacts to it. I feel like a lot of people were talking about White Lotus and like how that kind of just stands out and like the scoring canon. I don't know. Just like composers doing something fresh and different. Um, so I think people are ready for like fun and weird stuff and it really is impactful in the storytelling and it gets people excited about the show and it makes it iconic. And, yeah. If you think about Seinfeld, like that score is so weird. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> it's iconic. No one's done it since and it's like its own universe. Yeah, it's so cool. So we are at a really pivotal point in the industry right now with the writer's strike yes. and now the actor's strike. Um, obviously not None of what you composed would exist without you know, your amazing creator. So I'm just wondering, is there anything you can say about the strike? Is there anything you can? Oh, I mean, I about? I uh, am all for it. I I think it's very important. Um, you know, the studios need to. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get blacklisted. But the studios need to kind of like, um, you know, bring us into the present in terms of like, or bring themselves into the present in terms of how much it's changed. You know, we see like CEO salaries like going up as like folks' roles is going down. Streaming has kind of like made, you know, the budgets diminish. I don't know how that works. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, every business wants to, you know, save money and that's like their bottom line. But I think just remembering how we start it is like theater, you know, just being really amazing orators and just acting. I don't know, it's like it's all about the arts. And if we can kind of like pull away the business component of it and just remember that, you know, these actors can create any space to make a stage. Like, we don't necessarily need the companies. Like, we can create our own spaces to like do some really cool stuff and leverage the internet to like create platforms that more viewers can see, you know? Um, and, and just, you know, set our own terms. And I feel like that is with a lot of different industries especially like the concert industry. Um, so I think I like, just have to be careful with like, oh god, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Monopoly is happening and I think it's just really important that, you know, the actors and the writers like get what they need to have a sustainable life. Otherwise it's just like this is not gonna work. You can't just be this power hungry, money hungry entity and just not care about the arts. So it's like that's not cool. <laughs> I spoke to a lot of creatives. Yeah, no so I probably. I spoke to a lot of creatives like, like, like about the pandemic and how it affected all the yeah. musicians and stuff. So yeah. for you during the pandemic and quarantine, like as a creative, like where was your voice being set? Oh gosh, that was a challenging time for me and I think for everyone in just a variety of different ways. But um, let me think about that. My creative space. A lot of time space. to yourself. I mean, obviously, yeah, kind of like there was. I was still working on a few projects that were like kind of languishing a little bit, but I definitely. I had time to just write, you know, stuff my personal projects and 
um, and just spent a lot more time outside, which was nice. It was a nice reset. It was good. So there are certain genres that you don't want to make for and some that you do. I mean, you know. Like Let me think about that for a second. Walking Dead or I don't know. I don't know. I guess, oh, like genres of film and TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, you must have a favorite. I guess. You must have one that's, that's oh, I don't want to be there. It's really about the story. Yeah. So the story could be a horror story. The story could be a love story. It's like, if it's a good story, I'm like, count me in. You know? So for me, like, the medium doesn't necessarily matter. As long as it's a good story, I, and I like relate to what it's talking about, the characters, the setting. I, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> what was your first gig? How did you get started? Um, let me think. So my first, I guess, gig, like professional gig, was yeah. a pilot called yeah. 20s um, with Lena Wea, and I was so honored to be asked to like, you know, score that pilot for her. Um, so she'd been developing it for like 10 years plus, so it's like yeah. kind of her life story. -ish. And so um, that was my, I did that pilot, and it didn't get picked up right away. And so I went to Sundance on a whim that January, and then I just told everyone I'd written for this pilot. <laughs> and then I met, made so many connections. I, went, I didn't have a film there. I didn't have a pass. <laughs> I just went there and got my way into like parties and just like hung out with folks. And then I, I met so many people. And then when I came, they were like, "Let's reconnect when we're back in LA." Wow, and people just like, like that. Yeah. did it. They were like, "We reconnected when we were back Thrust in LA." Rushed into it. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. that's where I met Tim Davis, and she brought me into Black Lady Sketch Show. And that was my first series. Then twenty. Picked up, and that was my second series. And then from there, it was just like, You've been substantiated, like, you can do TV. And then from there, I did more films. I did an Apple TV called me, like, a different day called. It was like a snowball. <laughs> what a joy it must be to realize you can make a living at what you love to do. You it know? is. I am wow. blessed for sure. <laughs> I'm very grateful. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. They keep asking so many good questions. It's like, oh, that's mine. That's God. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a curveball. Video games. What do you have you thought about doing composing for that? I have thought about it, but it hasn't happened yet. You know, um, I'm open to it. Because um, I was thinking, you know, there are Adventure Time games, and I'm like, boy, yeah. that's. Uh, yeah, I haven't done that yet, but I would be down. I love RPGs, and I love just all sorts of games, and I don't know, I'm, I'm super open to it. I also love fighting games. <laughs> um, big Tekken <tech> fan. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the thing across the street oh, for it yet? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's across from the light rail. They have a Tekken 8 thing. Oh. I think what it was with Mike Tyson, I think, is uh, going to be part of their panel and everything Tyson, for it today. Yeah. Oh That's wild. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm totally open to it. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. So do you use uh, like a mix of standard pre recorded music and then sound effects? Like a very mix them together? How do you. I guess um, yeah, it's, it's sometimes I'll use a synthesizer or a keyboard that yeah. then triggers certain sounds and textures, but for okay. the most part, everything's original. Um, yeah, I write everything, and I'll bring in, I play like kind of more band instrumentation, but if I'm writing for strings, I can write for anything, and I'll bring in a player to like articulate the ideas that I come up with, or, yeah. So, it's a variety of places. Yeah, what <laughs> so a talent. Yeah, that's yeah. exciting. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you hadn't gone into music, what would you have gone into? Oh, I would have been a chemist. So my whole family... A is chemist? A chemist, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, my whole family's like in the STEM well, I'm field. I'm so glad you didn't do chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> At the rate well, our planet you, is declining, I might get back into it. We'll be very unexcited. We'll be very unexcited. I know. Uh, chemistry but, of all things. Yeah, so my whole family's in the STEM field. My brother did neuroscience, my dad works at NIH, like everyone just do it, like a doctor or whatever, and um, but I switched gears when I went to college. I, like, what did your dad say when you decided to do Oh, he was thoroughly this. disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. It, took, it was only in, until recently, like the last two or three years that he's like, acknowledges what I do and he can articulate what I do to his friends. Yeah, he's seen your stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. How effective you but are. that took yeah. some time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's funny, but it's okay, you gotta follow your heart. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of actors I talk to that have engineering degrees. Yeah. You know, and I say, why did you do that? Well, my parents. I mean, you it's understandable. Like, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I, I just, I have a one-year-old daughter. <laughs> and so I think, uh, not 
that I can say a lot about being a parent because I'm still learning. <laughs> but um, I think you just want you know, the best case scenario. You kind of create some like fail safes for your child just in case like the ultimate passion doesn't work out. So you just know that you can always go into a corporate or you can always become a scientist or you can always become a lawyer yeah, just in case. Their parents, yeah, their parents. Um, it just, it's like there to protect you in case like so you're not like you know just out on the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's next for you? What do you want to do? Oh what's, gosh, what's the um, next project. Next big project. Oh, the next big project. Um, let's see what I can talk about. Oh, I'm doing an animated feature oh, really? called Jody, um, and a spinoff of Daria. Oh, yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very excited. Now we have the storyboards for it. Oh, it's all it's all it's all done. It's about really? to be released. Yeah. It's waiting for you. Waiting for your magical touch. Yeah, it's all done. <laughs> and great. Young Love. It's also oh, a series wow. on Max that's coming out pretty soon. Um, and yeah, that's all I can share for now. <laughs> yeah, building quite a resume. This is great. Yeah, no, it's, it's so much fun. I'm having a 